a blessed Friday to us. This particular gospel reading today, which is actually uh, the end or towards the conclusion of the, of the second conclusion of the Gospel of St. John, is so much connected with the uh, invitation of the Lord Jesus, follow me at the end of the three questions that according to, to normal understanding and interpretation of this particular passage, actually is a self-redemption of Peter's three uh, denials that he did before Jesus was uh, crucified. Now, one interesting thing about this is uh, to, uh, this month is already June, and come, November, uh, come June 29 is going to be the feast of Saints Peter and Paul, actually, which talks about their martyrdom in Rome. Now, there is a very beautiful story, and in fact, there, there, there is a church uh, erected in that very place when, where uh, Peter was about to leave Rome because um, according to the tradition, tradition, to the tradition, because of the persecutions. And when uh, Peter was about to leave Rome, he met Jesus along the way. And then Jesus said to him, where are you going? No? And in Latin, where are you going is quo vadis. No? So quo vadis. And there is a quo vadis church there. Now, why, how, how, how is this connected with the invitation of Jesus to follow him? Because earlier than this, we hear a very uh, old proverb about old age. And this is a very beautiful expression where specifically there, is the, the, there are the words, you will stretch out your hands. Of course, talking about being dressed by another person, especially when you are old. But the stretching out of one's hands here also takes on the significant meaning of offering oneself to the cross, just like Jesus did stretch out his hands for the sake of the world. And so this is the, the prediction of Jesus to the kind of death that Peter would be offering and in glorifying God. So with, this, with these words, follow me, and in the tradition, in the story, Peter was told, quo vadis, and of course, Peter went back to Rome and then met his death there, crucified, just like his Lord, just like the Lord. We come to realize that in every moment of our lives, this invitation is also for us. There are moments when we try to flee. There are moments when we try to get out of the hot, hot area, no? the, the hot seat. But then we have to really come back because that is where we are being called. And St. Charles Wanga and his companion martyrs in Uganda practically did this, to water the seed of faith in black Africa. But Africa was not just a continent without saints, because even earlier, like St. Augustine, Perpetua and Felicity, there have already been saints there. But the constant uh, offering of one's life the constant shedding of blood is something that actually nourishes the faith, even despite the many different dangers in the world. And so, follow me. And whenever we go away, we always hear the, word, the words, quo vadis, where are you going? And finally, Peter, when he was crucified, he said to the, to the one who, who is crucify, crucifying him, Please do not do it the usual way. Invert the cross. Make my head on the ground, going to the ground, because I am not worthy to be crucified like my Lord. And this is a very beautiful reminder for all of us. Whatever position there is, and in our offering of our lives for the sake of the faith, we are able to water, to nourish, the very faith that is always in constant danger, especially in our times now. And so as we continue with this Eucharistic celebration, with the uh, intentions of really being true to what we are expected to do, let us constantly pray for each other as well. Because every now and then, we suffer certain kinds of martyrdoms for the sake of the faith and for the sake of the truth. Amen.